Hi everyone, here are your section 5.2 notes. Now we start to get into the good stuff of chapter 5, which is all the different things we can start doing with polynomials. Um, so if you want to kind of see into the future, today we're going to be getting into adding and subtracting polynomials, then we'll get into multiplying polynomials, and then we'll get into division of polynomials, which is where it gets really fun. Um, so adding and subtracting polynomials is probably going to be the easiest lesson, I would say, of this whole entire chapter. Um, so hopefully these problems feel pretty easy for you, and hopefully, and they should. Uh, so if you guys remember from the activity that you guys did on Desmos, where you were doing different types of classifications of polynomials, this should hopefully just kind of be a review. Again, you're going to want to get all this stuff written in your notes so that you have it available um, for your assessments for Chapter 5. So what is a polynomial? So a polynomial is a term or a finite sum of terms in which all variables have whole number exponents and no variables appear in the denominators. Um, so that's really important to make sure you understand that you have whole number exponents, so you can't have fractional exponents, and you can't have negative exponents, because remember negative, negative exponents would move them down to the denominator. Um, so they need to be whole numbers, they need to be positive, um, and you need to have a bunch of terms being added or subtracted together. So here we're going to write the polynomial in standard form, and I'll move my face out of the way. There we go. Um, so the standard form of a polynomial tells us that we need to have your highest exponent written first, and then fizzle down to the smallest, which would be zero. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five different terms. The highest exponent is 5, so I'm going to write that term first. So 8y to the 5th, next would be the 4th power, so minus 9y to the 4th, then minus 6y to the 3rd, and then plus y plus 12. So that would be my polynomial written standard form. If I do the same thing for b, we have a negative 2, an m, a 6m to the 2nd, and a negative 4m to the 3rd. So my highest exponent, or my highest degree, is 3. So I'll write that one first, so negative 4m to the 3rd, followed by a 6m squared, followed by a plus m, and then a minus 2. So there would be polynomials written in standard form. And you should get in the habit of writing your polynomials in standard form like that. Okay. So, how do we classify types of polynomials? Well, we classify them either by, well, we do, not either. We classify them by the degree and by the number of terms. So, these are all the different names that we're going to be using to classify the degree. So, if your degree is zero, which would make, so there, there would be no variable. Sure, there's a better way to word that. So no variable, because if, remember, if you have an exponent of zero, that's just one. We just call that constant. So if your degree is zero, that's constant. So there is no variable attached to it. It's just the constant number. If your degree is one, which means you probably just have like an X or a Y or a Z or an A or a B, because usually ones are invisible. We don't put them there. Then it's linear. Two is quadratic. 3 is cubic, 4 is quartic, and 5 is quintic. So if you guys remember that your degree comes from your exponents, but you could have a bunch of variables attached together in a term and then add those exponents together. So if you think about um, quadratic, it could be something such as x squared or x times y, because that would be 1 and 1, which would make 2 or y squared, or a and b, right? For cubic, it could be x to the third, or it could be something like x squared y, because 2 plus 1 would make 3, or y squared x, 2 plus 1 would make 3, or y to the x, z, right? That would be make 3. And then so forth for 4. You could have all those different variations. So x to the fourth, x squared y squared is a degree of 4, x to the third y, and all those different combos. And then the same thing would apply with your uh, quintic. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. All right, so then we have different types of polynomials by the number of terms. So we have a monomial, 
a binomial and a trinomial. So a monomial is something that has one term, which means that we have no pluses or minuses. There's no addition. It's just x or 2xyz, right? There's no addition or subtraction happening. Binomial has two terms, which means you're, you're going to have one plus or minus. So x minus 1 or x plus y, right? That would be a binomial. A trinomial has three terms, which means that you would have two pluses or minuses. So x plus y plus z or x squared plus 2x minus 1, right? That would be a trinomial. And anything beyond that, we'll just call it a polynomial um, because usually we don't do a whole lot of multiplying and dividing with something larger than a trinomial. Okay, so we would say like a polynomial of four terms or a polynomial of five terms if you wanted to say that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some classification. So we're going to simplify the polynomial and then classify it. So we have x to the third plus 4x squared plus 5x squared minus 1. When I combine my like terms in the middle, we end up with x to the third plus 9x squared minus 1. Already written in standard form, my highest degree is 3, so it's a cubic. I've got three terms, so cubic trinomial. Here we're going to combine like terms. So I've got all degrees of 3, right? So that means I can combine all these together. So negative 5 y to the thirds plus 8 y to the thirds would be 3 y to the thirds. 3y to the thirds minus another y to the third would give me 2y to the third. I know it's not asking for it, but if we had to classify that, that would be a cubic monomial. And then for b, combining my x's, we get 6 minus 9, so negative 3x. Combining my y's, 5 and 2 makes 7y. If I had to classify it, my highest degree is 1, so that's a linear binomial. Okay, and again, usually you write, so for standard form, you write highest degree to smallest, and then we have multiple variables. Usually you put them in alphabetical order, so x comes before y, so I would do that one first. Okay, see if you can do this one on your own. Combine all your like terms. Did you get y to the third minus 19x squared plus x? Hopefully you did. All right, so now our last two examples are adding and subtracting. So adding is just as simple as what we just did in the previous examples, combining your like terms. Um, I could kind of just ignore the parentheses and look for like things. So I have an a to the fifth. Here's an a to the fifth. So let's combine those to make negative 5a to the fifth. Here I have a not, negative 9a to the third plus 8a to the third so will be negative 1a to the third. Here I have a 4a squared. I have no other 4a squared, so that just comes down to my answer. And here I have a constant of just 2. There are no other constants, so that just comes down into my answer. So there we add it. So I ha if I had to classify it, I would call that a quintic polynomial with four terms, right? Okay, see if you can do this adding one on your own. Did you get 11a to the fifth minus a to the third plus 7a squared plus 4? Hopefully you did. And then probably the most challenging problems that you're going to have in this section is, oops, come back. Uh, don't do that one yet. There, example. I got it back. There we go. Um, is subtracting. And the only thing that's complicated about subtracting is you have to consider subtracting that second um, polynomial. And remember, subtracting is the same as adding the opposite. So I can easily convert this into an addition problem by converting my subtraction sign into a plus sign and taking the opposite of everything in my second polynomial. And then just add straight across. So negative 6m squared plus 5m is negative m squared. Negative 8m plus negative 7 be negative 15m, 5 plus 8 is 13. If you're good with subtraction and you just want to do the subtraction in your head, like think about doing um, 
negative 6 minus a negative 5. Like, if you can do that and think negative 6 minus negative 5 is negative 1, go for it. And if you can do negative 8 minus 7 to get negative 15 and 5 minus a negative 8 to get to 13, sure, go for it. Me personally, I'm more visual, so I need to see... Um, you know, the change of the signs, I guess, is what I need to say. Okay, so try this last one on your own, and then we'll be done with notes. So m squared plus 4m minus 1 minus negative 6m squared plus 13m minus 1. Did you get 7m squared minus 9m? Hopefully you did. Okay, this concludes your notes, guys. Bye.